That's why Final Fantasy VII Remake is better than Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, sorry, that, that's good, that's good. I made it, yeah. Hey Jefferson, what do you got there? I got the couple of noodles, like you asked. What are you doing? Did you read the call sheet that I do? Oh my Jesus, I cannot believe we are gonna make this joke. Yes, I read the call sheet. That's where I saw a cup of noodle, but we didn't have any, so I rode my hoverboard down to the nearest gas station down the street that sells groceries and designer sneakers with the tags cut off. Wow. I bought all the noodles like you asked. Okay, no, today's show has Cup of Noodle the streamer, host, self-professed loud gamer, not actual Cup of Noodles. You expect a bunch of Cup of Noodles to host X-Play? Oh, that makes more sense. Tell me you did not put this on the company card. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. Oh, he definitely did. Yo. What's up, y'all? What y'all doing? The, the vibe is it's feeling real intense in here. Oh, cut! It's you! Hey! What's up? Yeah, um, this is supposed to be a, a comedy sketch that everyone laughs at and enjoys, not whatever that is. It's kind of debatable around these parts. Look, go return all the cup of noodles right now. We cannot afford to have any kind of financial hiccups with X-Play. Your entire salary is what we use for Gex's food. So go return that right away. Gex? Uh, actually, we we don't have lunch. Come on, Frosk. What's the spice? Come on. Cup, are you ready to kick it with us? I mean, let's get it. It can't be any worse than whatever this shit is right now. Let, let's do it. Oh, believe me. You, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that pans out. Today on X-Play. Danny Trejo is here to talk about the skateboarding action of Ali Ali World and sell us a taco. We try to read the mind of a raccoon in our preview of Ghostwire Tokyo, and Adam Sessler finally finishes Kingdom Hearts 3. He now knows what a Keyblade graveyard is and no longer fears death. May your heart be your guiding key, whatever the hell that means. It's game time. Welcome back to another week of X-Play Live! And it's happy Black History Month. I'm the Black Hokage, and I'm joined by my co-host, Frost, Gerard, the completionist. I cannot talk today. It's okay, my name's Hart, it's fine. <laughs> and our special guest this week is Cup of Noodle. Woo! <laughs> now, if you find yourself asking where can I get more X-Play content, then be sure to check out the G4 TV YouTube page. There you'll find reviews and videos like our Sifu review that we published today. And of course, if you want to fill the empty void in your life with X-Play swag, then head online to shop.g4tv and check out our merch. Now that we've got our jam-packed show full of discussions such as news and special interviews with Danny Trejo, so let's go ahead and speed run the news. The old reliable. That is still the oldest graphic in G4. <laughs> We've had that since the beach house. But it's consistent, it works. The best part about that graphic, I don't know if we can play it again, but if we can, it's the french fries in the bottom right hand corner. Can we get a rerun? Oh, is that possible? Is that possible? Look, look in the top, in the bottom right hand corner, there's french fries. I, I did not. <laughs> Just french I fries. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> there's, there's CDs, no CD player. And the generic N64 cartridge with the X on yeah, there. I love it's it. Great. To be fair, if you had to associate a food with X play, wouldn't it's it french be fries? french fries? I just love that we can rerun the card. Because we have a budget. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Control Room, for helping us out with that. So welcome to Speed Run the News, where we scour the internet for the hottest and weirdest gaming news. So you don't have to. Our first story comes from a galaxy not so far away, with season one of the Book of Boba Fett quickly coming to a close. Some footage of the canceled Boba Fett game titled Star Wars 1313 has recently resurfaced. It was supposed to be the Star Wars version of Uncharted, and it was one of the last Star Wars projects on the LucasArts books before the rights were given to EA. But does Boba Fett deserve his own video game still? Should it focus on other bounty hunters, or should 1313 remain in the Sarlacc pit? Let us know in the poll on the screen. Cast your votes, exercise your right to votes, ladies and gentlemen. So I've seen the gameplay. 
Um, I was kind of really disappointed when they, they canceled it, but now that I've seen more of the gameplay, uh, cause you know, you remember the original reveal, it looked amazing. It was very polished, but what we saw, it was clearly like some pre alpha stuff that had leaked online. And it was like, it was kind of just him running around and explosions everywhere. So I get the vibe of uncharted, but I didn't really see any gunplay mechanics. The, the platforming looked a little janky. So for me, it's one of those things that's like, ah, maybe it might be time to let star Wars 13, 13, uh, rest in peace. Uh, it, it kind of, maybe there was a reason it was got canceled. I am Star wars out. Unless it is KOTOR, I want nothing to do with Star Wars at this point. Between all the TV shows, all the games, I, I'm no, no more Star Wars. That's fair. Last Star Wars I remember was Battlefront, and that, that, was, that was a terrible time. You made a face, that's fair. Um, I remember <laughs> Battlefront, so y'all got that. I, if it, I, last Star Wars I really liked was Lego Star Wars, and I feel like that speaks that's volumes. Yo, on, you know, that was a good game. I thought it was a good time. And, and they're about to re-release all of them under a new engine for the first time with all new mechanics and stuff. They're like revitalizing the Lego Star Wars franchise. I can't it's, imagine it's the cow that they keep milking for this. Like, what does it look like at this point? Which one, the Lego Star Wars, Star Wars or, or in just general? Star Wars? Because I think both apply because they've released those games several times. People who play Lego Star Wars are fascinating to me. Or Lego games, It's a period. really good Why, game. They're good. Why, they are you. good. Why, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. I love, <laughs> I love this game. I love, I love Yo, the Lego games. They're fun you, as hell. How do you continue to just collect all those blocks? It drives my OCD crazy. Dude, my job is to complete stuff. It's like the perfect thing. It feels good to get blocks. <laughs> got you. I got pretty. you. So to my surprise, the chat says that they would like to see another Boba Fett game. So. What? It, it looks like, I mean, the chat's right. The customer's always right. We got to go. Well, that. when the question is, does Boba Fett deserve his own game? No one's going to say no. But which I do say, think about it, guys. Do you really need another Star Wars thing? I mean. Do you trust them at this point? I better not see you play Star Wars Eclipse when it comes out. <laughs> I, when I saw the Eclipse trailer, I was like, oh, KOTOR is looking good. And I was like, mm, KOTOR is looking good? And then it showed a clip, so I was like, ah, nah, I'm out. And then it showed what studio it was, and I was like, ooh, yeah, real out. Cool. Well, <laughs> last week, PlayStation released a state of the play devoted entirely to the upcoming Gran Turismo 7. It's been five years since Gran Turismo Sport was released and nearly a decade since Gran Turismo 6. In that time, we've seen the Forza series really come into its own and essentially it's taken the Gran, uh, Gran Turismo spot as the pinnacle of racing games, which begs the question, can Gran Turismo reclaim its crown as the ultimate driving simulator? And let us know your hype for Gran Turismo 7 via the poll on the screen. Exercise that right. I just have to say, the... Driving simulator is not Forza or GT. It's a set of Corza, so. <laughs> I've seen that game on Steam. What's so different about that game? A set of co uh, Corza, co I can never say it correctly. Capetizione, say it in Italian. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ACC. I met, uh, okay, I'm like, what? Um, <laughs> I know chat will say it. So what, what makes that game so unique compared to uh, the other one since you love that one more than Gran Turismo? Uh, laser scanned tracks. It's kind of like the standard for sim racing. If you have a sim mm. rig, chances are that you're either playing ACC or iRacing. So the fact that we tried to shove, just as like an aside, GT and uh, Forza into sim racing when they're simcade games, like don't get me wrong, you can have great sim experiences on them, but it's not never going to match to ACC and iRacing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the chat, the chat doesn't seem to care about Gran Turismo 7. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Anytime I have to drive more than an hour in real life, I'm tired of it. So I don't really want to play a racing game unless it's Mario Kart. See, that, I, my biggest racing game is Mario Kart. But in seeing Gran Turismo come back, it makes me happy because that means Midnight Club might come back. And if Ooh, we get that back, yeah. I'm happy. talk about the classics. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if we can get Gran Turismo, it's been like a decade. That is a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> we are. They just announced Grand Theft Auto 6, though, so it's gonna, uh, it'll probably, right. be, yeah, it'll probably right. be a but while. But we're not getting that because people keep spending money on GTA 5. You're not wrong. <laughs> we've, we've had this conversation multiple times <laughs> in the show, so this is this All is deja vu. Stop buying shark cards, please. The more stop. We funnel money, the more we're not getting. Uh, we're not getting GTA Six. Y'all keep putting money in it. Rockstar's chilling. I like the fact that Rockstar gets like a giant like standing ovation for just an announcement of something. Like they put up like a Twitter post and we're like, yes, <laughs> GTA Six finally. Nothing else. Title screen. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what yeah. the bar's in hell. We're just not expecting to get it. So we're just happy to hear anything at this point. You love to see it. Now, as the so-called resident shooter guy, 
I had to talk about our next, uh, I appreciate the cheer. Yeah, shooters, <laughs> woo! One guy, yeah. <laughs> shooter guy! <laughs> we love shooters! <laughs> We had to talk about our next story. Recently, a Hungarian neuroscientist named Victor Tauf accomplished a dream that he likely had when he blazed out of his mind when he taught some rats how to play Doom 2. I'm, I'm sorry, huh? what? <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. Wait, this, is that an actual rat? I think so. I didn't see 6ix9ine. Uh, <laughs> this dude said, if there's one thing that science needs, it's to see if rats can learn first-person shooters probably explains why my teammates have been so ass in Apex recently. So just to be clear, this is fucking real. Someone trained rats to play Doom. Yeah, Doom. yeah, this guy is a legit software okay. engineer and a neuroscientist who taught rats to play Doom 2 no. by putting them on a rollerball and giving them sugar water when they did something right. Aww. Okay. I'm just sitting here because rats are better than me somewhere. All right, I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's weird as <laughs> <laughs> But it's low-key impressive. I'm, I'm here for it. Well, we actually have a fellow scientist with us today to discuss some insane experiments. Joining us live via satellite is Dr. Kenny Bizko. Kenny, welcome to X-Play. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh, boy. Yeah. Did I say your name right, Bizko? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Dr. Kenny Bizko. Yeah, that's right. Um. Hey, hey, doctor, I'm sorry, but did you just say doctor with air quotes? Yeah, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a real doctor. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Uh, yeah, but that makes us feel like you're not a real doctor. I mean, you know how it is. There's issues with online accreditation and its legality and stuff like that. I'm just as much a doctor as anyone else. Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, Dr. Dre, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Seuss, Dr. Disrespect, perfectly legitimate, all of them. No, none, none of those guys are real doctors. N not at all. Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz are, are actual people, but I wouldn't call them doctors. Are they though? I, I mean, it's, I love me a good Dr. Pepper, I'm no hater, but that's not really a person, it's not a person. How dare you! Dr. Brian S. Pepper was absolutely a real doctor. He was a psychopath, and no one liked the guy, but he was a doctor. Anyway, I was called here for my expertise and not to have my credentials questioned. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry about that. We just wanted to get your thoughts on the amazing research by Victor Toth with... <laughs> Victor? <laughs> that son of a bitch! <laughs> He stole my research! He what? He stole my research! The hat stole my research! I did that way before he ever did it. Well, well wait, you, you taught rats how to play Doom before he did? Oh, yep, yep, I did way more than that too. I, but I did that like day one with a Game Boy Advance, a toilet brush, and a roll of bubble tape gum. That guy's a joke! Just, we're gonna have a quick internal conversation. We're not gonna keep this interview going, right? This is like not a, we should just stop. This That's interview. a great question, Gerard. I do have a lot of other projects in development. Well, I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna be here that long. You know, not a long time, just a good time. I wanna know more. Can, can, we, can we hear more? Yeah, of course you can. Well, look, while you were busy patting that jackass on the back for teaching rats to play Doom, I've since trained a parakeet to play Half-Life 2, a llama's playing Goldeneye, only picks odd job, and I got a raccoon that loves <laughs> Warzone. The fact that it only picks odd job is very <laughs> fascinating to me. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a question. This is Frost with G4. Can you tell me more about the raccoon? Yeah, Frost, uh, the, 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 the raccoon <laughs> is shit in the gulag and never revives, but he's pretty good with a Cooper carbine, so. You know. Nice, nice. Good question, Frox. Um, what the hell is going on here? Is this what y'all do on it? Is this what y'all usually do here? On a uh, you know, mm. we've had a lot worse shows, so this is this is actually this is pretty. Actually a high we're doing yeah, okay. I mean, we're doing all right. Yeah. I mean, you look. You name an animal, I probably taught it to play a game. Right now, I'm teaching a giraffe to play Mortal Kombat 2. Loves to pick a katana. I, look, I, I also tried to get a duck to play uh, Unlimited Goose Game, and she simply would not do it. Outright refused. And my hermit crab spent a thousand dollars in Genshin Impact. I'm not sure how I'm gonna pay off that credit. Ah, uh, yes, Unlimited Goose Game. It's the sequel to Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> did this, did this, this dude just give the hermit crab your credit card number? Look, I just did it so he could bypass some grinding. It turns out he's just a lazy asshole. He just does it. He just pays to win. Uh, yeah. This is uh, Foreskin from X Play. What about cats? No. 
Cats cannot be controlled, nor can they be trusted. Okay, well, is there anything else that you're working on now that maybe, I don't know, doesn't have animals involved? <laughs> of course! Of course they're gonna, I'm not an idiot! <laughs> I'm also working. Uh, who that made me a little lightheaded? I'm also working on an ingestible liquid that will make VR obsolete. Dope. That actually sounds pretty dope. Yeah, I got it right here. All right, so now it's essentially just a weapons grade hallucinogen, but it makes gaming awesome. Are we about to do drugs on X Play? This is this is wildly irresponsible. Well, I, I knew you'd come around, Gerard. I no, that's not what I meant. But... I'll admit it. I'm in. He won me over. Well, Dr. Bizco, thank you for coming on. Are you kidding me? I'm glad I could finally clear the air and prove that anyone excited for rats playing Doom is just an idiot impressed by texting on a flip phone. So, you know what? Thank you. Cheers. Yo, yo. Whoa, 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 don't do it. Whoa, don't do it. The hallucinogen. No, 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 no. No, no. This is not the hallucinogen. This is the. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, we sure hope so. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us, Doc. Oh, uh, listen, Akagmi. I it was absolutely my it was it was absolutely my plan. Nobody move. Oh Lord. The walls have started to melt. Oh God, my legs feel like tired peanut butter. It's happening! <laughs> wow! Okay then. Well, I guess we'll be right back with more X-Play after that. Uh, don't go anywhere, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to X-Play. <laughs> Listen, now I've been a content creator for 15 years now, and there's one video I produced eight years ago that I'll never forget. It was a, it was a video titled, It's Hard Being a Black Gamer. In this video, I jokingly cried about their lack of hair options for black people when creating your protagonists in games. The thing is, we all know that jokes are half-truths. It's been eight years since that was released, and uh, in that time, I've seen numerous other videos, articles, and tweets echoing the same sentiment. I do think that things have improved. I've seen much better examples of black hair in games recently, but that doesn't mean things can't improve further. And since it's Black History Month stateside, and also we at G4 love black people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love that chocolate. Why not further? Why not further discuss the topic of black representation in games and why it matters? Joining me for today's segment is a lovely content creator who goes by the name of Cup of Noodle, yeah. and our X Play producer Joe. Hi, I'm Joe. Welcome to the show. All right, so you guys have been black all your lives, right? Uh, I, I believe so. I feel like G4 just confirmed it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm glad that we could give you that, that co-sign of approval. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you told me. <laughs> well, I know for me personally, uh, when it comes to like a pre-made protagonist, I don't really care what they look like. I just enjoy the game for what it is. Yeah. So for me, it's more so about when you're given the option to create a character. It's always been frustrating as a kid to go into a game and see that, you know, all you basically had was the basic Caesar haircut, the corn rolls, and then the afro, basically. And even still, even with the afro, like, the texture might not Those be right. Or it would be, like, yeah. super short. It wouldn't be, like, a big one. So it was, it, I never was able to identify with myself when creating that character. And it's like, to me, it's kind of lazy. It's like, why even put that in the game if you're not going to give me the option Agreed. to go all the way in? So uh, for me, it was always important to do that. But what about you, Cup? Why was representation in games for you important? Again, I'm with you, so if it's already a pre-made protagonist, I've been cool, you know? Like, I like Tommy Versetti, he's one of my favorites, but mm. when it came down to me, and I'm trying to create me, and I'm just gonna say men characters, because women, I kind of gave up. There's only a mm. handful of games where I, I don't even try. You, my GTA character, she's Asian. I, I, don't, I don't even try to be me, I'm gonna be honest. Um, again, you said the Caesar, but you also get the Caesar with the part, though. Don't forget, you might get a, 
They I, put lines in it. Can I just say that I just realized we're sitting here talking about like black haircuts and I'm really upset. I forgot to get a haircut, man. I should have came in with a clean <laughs> fade, bro. I'm over here, my hair looking nappy. But yeah, I, I actually didn't even think of your perspective. Uh, that's crazy from the woman's perspective. And now I think about it, I don't see a lot of black no. female hair, uh, hair options. You get dreads and then short dreads and then even shorter dreads. And then like maybe shaved side dreads, that, it, that's kind of it. And then even with the dreads, the hair doesn't even flow right. Like a lot of times the hair just doesn't move. Now it just looks like licorice ropes. I don't know. It just, <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like ropes. No, nah, nah, it never hits the way you thought it would. Well, I will say until like Horizon. So Horizon Zero Dawn, they got that right. Mm -hmm. Horizon Forbidden West looks really good too. So that was kind of the first time where I saw dreads in the game and I was like. One specific yeah. stood out to you. <sighs> The roots, it's not really the the front. It usually just looks like mush, kind of like a Caesar, and then the back is like a ponytail mm -hmm. with like dreads attached to it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you saw the parts, you saw the baby hair, you saw the separation, it wasn't a gap. You know when they put parts in games, yeah. but it's not really a part as much as it's like a, a one lane, one way bike lane. It's like, why are the parts so spaced? You only get like three brains. And you know what I forgot to even mention when teeing up this conversation, for those that are watching and don't understand why, like why is this important to someone? So in the black community, we refer to like our hair as our crown, like kings and queens. So to us, it's like a form of expression and game developers might not be aware of that. So that's why I kind of wanted to bring that up in conversation. That's why it's important to us. But what about, what about you? Joe, uh, what, what are some games that you think do a good job of actually representing black uh, culture? Um, I mean, honestly, if we're going way back, I think the Def Jam games for me, that was like the the first and really one of the few times where I felt like the culture was like really represented, not just in hair, but in terms of the style, in terms of the music, the cast. Um, also, I think in terms of character creators, um, in recent years, the games have been shaky, but the the WWE games always have really great character creators that just allow you to like, if you want to make it, you can make it. And I think one that was surprisingly good that I didn't see coming was uh, the Tony Hawk remake. I thought uh, you actually had like really? a pretty yeah. I got to make a character that looked exactly like I wanted that character to look like, which I was not expecting in a Tony Hawk remake of all things. Mm, okay, okay. I think uh, for me, a good example would be Assassin's Creed Origins that recently released. Yeah. I mean, it takes place in Egypt. And I think Ubisoft did a great job of representing black hair. I really like the way that they did dreads in that game. The way that they were styled, it wasn't just regularly hanging, but then there were like beads in certain scent and then like ponytails, the way it would hit. And also like kind of like the texture of the hair and the way that it flowed. I was like, yo, Bayek looks like a black man basically. And I was like, I love that. It's just having that little extra little bit. And then as much as pain is, as much as it pains me to give the game credit, the NBA 2K series does do a decent job of representing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we gotta fix those microtransactions though. Um, but like, you do have a lot of good black hairstyles yes. uh, specifically. Um, so I think they do a great job in terms of, um, they have a lot of different patterns, different designs. Um, and then it's also hilarious too, because when you go to the barbershop in that game, you could be bald headed and then you pay for a haircut and now you got a high top fade. So even the way they implement <laughs> the hair, I think is really dope uh, and I think is really funny. Um, also, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and be preachy either. I think solutions are really important. So one thing that I want to bring up in this conversation is I also think that it's not up to the developers currently that are creating games. I mean, it's a, it's a white dominated space right now. I also think we as black people, you know, these kids that are coming up, encourage your kids to be game developers. I know a lot of times from the environments that we come from, we don't know that these possibilities are available. And if we want to see some of that change, we have to implement it ourselves. So I always try to encourage people, yo, encourage, if your child is a gamer, encourage that, encourage those beautiful black babies to be game developers so that we can get more of what we want to see. Because when they revealed um, Deadshot, yeah. Deadshot in the new Suicide game, I had tweeted out, I was like, yo, that fade on Deadshot is dope. And I put it on Twitter and the developer was black. He tweeted me and he was like, yo, I appreciate you noticing that. And I'm like, I knew it was a brother. It was just too clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing though, you know, you can tell when it's authentic, like when it's, it's not guesswork. You can tell when it's like rooted in someone who like you're from the culture or just someone who had a conversation. Like, so how many times have you seen a game and you're just like, if you just talk to literally like one black person, right, right. Yeah. you could have avoided all of that. So I think, you know, in terms of solutions, it really is just about talking to each other. Like all, all you have to do is just ask a question and people would be Absolutely. willing to answer. And just to add one more thing to it, if you don't care about anything we're talking about from a business standpoint, you're gonna make more money if you have the correct type of styles with the character, skin tone, the hair, because when people of color see that, they'll be like, oh, 
that person knows what they're, yeah, I'm going to go support that. Because a lot of people don't know one of the biggest reasons why Apex is so popular in the streaming community. If you go in the streaming section on Apex, it's a lot of people of color and women playing those games. And it's because that cast is so diverse and they look like characters that look like us. And when people can identify with that, they get excited and you make more money. It's a win-win situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But in saying that, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it back on us, though, because at the end of the day, if they if devs do something right, show them love, show them that, mm. you know, they got yeah. it right. Support them. You know, I, I know we want to see representation, but if we don't show support and say, hey, I'm big up in this, they got it right. That gives them a pass. It's very easy to say, well, we put Deathloop out there. No one cared. That's when it's our job to make sure, you know, we, we, we show up. We, we show some love. We represent that. That's how it goes. There's no reason why content creators should be creating hair packs and style packs for black people. Absolutely not. Like the content creator X Mare. She's a popular streamer. There's no reason why that should be happening if that's a big part of your community. Just pay attention. That's all I'm saying. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you got all the insight into how people of color feel about black, uh, black representation in games. A lot of things we see are dated, and if you put a little bit more effort into those small details, I promise you the response you're going to see is positive and it's probably going to help your pocketbooks. Now, as you all know, Abby has slowly been converting us all into the church of Fortnite. And well, Redditor user H, I don't know what that shit is. <laughs> What the hell is that? H-O-H-A-R-T-H-Y <laughs> something. Reddit, the Reddit guy. Har. Is it's har? Okay. Horse. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. You can't read horse? I can't read that. I can't the way it's spelled, it's weird. Horf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> decided to take X play in Fortnite to a whole new level. Literally, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Fourth, I just want to apologize from the bottom of my heart. I can't read. So <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, Horth, for creating that promo. We even heard it got Abby a nod of approval, which only Gex Mantha has gotten so far. Well, we've got some bills to pay, but stay glued to your screen because we've got more X-Play after the break. Please, please, no. <laughs> it may be a big month for gaming, but the year is just getting started. Thank you, Teleprompter. Now, last Thursday, we finally got more information about Tango Gameworks Ghostwire Tokyo, including its release date, March 25th. Now, in this game, players will take on a role of Akito, a young man whose spirit has been fused with that of a detective named KK. It is up to you to harness your newfound paranormal abilities to solve the mystery of the disappearances and save the city. Now, Adam Sessler and our producer, Emily, got to attend a preview of the game, and I had the chance to sit down and pick their brains about Ghostwire Tokyo. What is the gameplay actually like? Yeah, so this was our first official look at gameplay, because we've just kind of had these teaser trailers up until this point. Uh, it is first person, okay. which I love. 
And yeah, it seems to be the, almost this kind of combination. What it reminded me of a little bit was control meets Ghostbusters. I like that word. Join, I like both those words together. Join me on this journey. Uh, because there are moments where, yeah, you have these paranormal, you have kind of these spiritual paranormal powers. And so you're taking down these, these demons and these bad spirits. And yeah, with a combination of hand gestures. And then at one point, you're basically kind of like trapping them and kind of pulling. You have to do, there's like this pulling motion, which is what reminded me of like, the ghost trap in the Ghostbusters video game where you have to like line up your proton pack and deliver the ghost right over the track. And there was this tension in the controller, which was great. Uh, but yeah, that's what it reminded me of. What about you, Adam? No, I no, I, 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 I think that's actually pretty spot on. Um, so the, the, the gameplay we saw was clearly from very like, there was probably a cutscene that we didn't see that was like at the very start of the game, but these were like probably the first half hour parts in the first couple of hours of the game and so there were elements of gameplay that were being introduced um and clearly the big one was like not only are you kind of you shoot stuff out of your hand to bring down the health of the ghosts or the kind of the spirit enemies but to kind of like that you, there's an essential finishing move that emily was describing where you kind of do the cat's cradle thing and you yank the evil soul out of it um it, it, it's one of those where you can kind of tell that this is going to become more advanced and more complex and probably the motions you do to get rid of the enemies are, 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 are going to shift and you get more powers. But these seem to be like th those those kind of fundamentals that a lot of the gameplay is going to grow out of. Yeah, because we saw like we saw like a bow. You get the super cool spiritual bow at some point. That's true. And yeah, then there was a, another moment. Yeah, where they, you you will go to the shrine. You cleared out the shrine and you kind of like leveled up and got a new ability, which was firepower. So this is kind of the next thing that I wanted to ask, or at least speculate about, because there's not a ton of information about the project, is that uh, given Bethesda's history, do we think that it's going to have a, uh, a core set of elements that goes alongside of it, like the ability to level up or unlock different items? Like, do you think it'll be more of kind of that action RPG, or do you think it kind of looks like it's fitting more in an action adventure type of game? Um, I, you know, I'm 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 going to go with uh, b because it's Shinji Mikami. He is the the the, the head of Tango Gameworks, uh, and, and just you know, I actually uh, assisted Bethesda and uh, Tango uh, with the first uh, Evil Within game. Just just kind of want to get that out there. I love Mikami. I love all of his games. Um, I think it's safe to say that there is going to be some degree of leveling up, improving if it's not your weapons, then some of what your skills and abilities are. I, the, the one thing I would definitely say about this preview is it almost seemed to be so carefully circumspect to not tell us too much. I think sometimes it didn't serve the game all that well because uh, you didn't see kind of the Mikami crazy or get a sense of what a boss fight might be or like what crazy left turns this game was going to take. It seemed fairly safe. But once again, it was from the first two hours of the game when you're just trying to teach the player sort of what the basic essentials are. As far as... Uh kind of expectations or, or narrative goes for it. Um, I mean, obviously it's hard to say anything because again, there's such limited uh, experience with it or just even anything that's out there. But what are we thinking it's gonna be? Is this gonna be more emphasis on horror? Is this gonna be more emphasis on supernatural? Is this more emphasis on science, uh, science fiction? I mean, using kind of a Japanese folklore background, there's not a ton of games that kind of fit in a first person, uh, more mature, adult-oriented Japanese folklore uh, theme, which is kind of weird, because if you think about Japanese folklore and how it's used for, like, horror cinema, it has a very long storied history, but I'm trying to think of the last big game that we have, probably Okami was probably the last big, like, Japanese folklore game. The, f the, f the photo horror one. Oh, yeah! I'm looking on the name! <laughs> Fatal Frame! Fatal Frame, uh, Fatal Frame, Fatal, Fatal Frame! frame. Um, yeah, that was something that's, that's really stood out to me. Like, I love uh, folklore from, like, all different countries. Something I do whenever I travel is I purchase like fairy tale books or folklore books from wherever I am. So I've got one from Japan, I've got one from Prague, because I think it's so interesting. And it was so much fun because in this game, like we're running around, oh, there's a tanuki, cool. Oh, and then there was like you, there were like these Tengu flying above the city, and you could like use your your co super cool spiritual powers to like grapple onto them. And yeah, it definitely seems to be more supernatural thriller. Okay. As opposed to like, I know we've had uh was it The Evil Within 
and Evil Within 2. A lot more horror. This is a lot more like thriller. There are this, the Slender Manny esque. Oh. Uh, uh, exactly. It's, it's much more creepy and it's much more like unsettling than it is like jump scary horror. Like there was a level where you had to go clear the, um, you had to go like clear the spiritual seal in the apartment building because like uh, you were exploring and the room started turning and furniture was like the beds on the wall. And it just was like, if you can picture a completely haunted apartment building and how creepy and just utterly unsettling it could get, just visuals wise, it was exploring those elements in such a cool way that I was like, oh man, this game cannot, I was, I was on the fence about this game originally, but after this preview, I am hooked. It's really interesting. There's a lot of games um, it feels yeah. like that have kind of slid underneath the radar, especially when you have kind of the big hitters like Ragnarok and Horizon, literally on the horizon. On the horizon. Uh, Forsaken, and it feels like Ghost, uh, Ghostwire were kind of like, oh, that looks interesting, but I don't really know anything about it, and so it kind of fell onto the uh, the back burner there. But now. Kind of hearing that, I'm like, huh, that does sound very interesting, very atmospheric uh, horror-based. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's really interesting. Um, I was actually taken aback, you know, by the degree to which it's clearly building off of Japanese Shinto folklore uh, for a lot of the horror elements. Um, once again, I just, I don't even know how many times I've, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Mikami. He has always struck me in the interviews as having an incredible depth of knowledge about Western horror. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, all that kind of stuff, that I was a like, wow, like you're actually doing Japanese horror, folklore, supernatural. Um, it, was, it was surprising. And kind of uh, to what Emily said, that Okami, I think it's the last time that you've seen some of this Japanese folklore. It's also, it's an oddly touchy subject. Okami was really big in the West, not big in Japan at all. Mm -hmm. I heard uh, that. Because a lot of those myths are quite associated with, well, the imperial era in the middle of the 20th century, which, you know, was not good. Um, and that it tends to be that kind of thing that kind of gets shoved to the wayside because it's controversial. Uh, and and, and I, I do not believe that this stuff is being applied whimsically inside of the game. And mm -hmm. I think that there's going to be some very interesting depth. And also what Emily said, that one sequence where suddenly your perspective gets all turned around, that's what they're so good at a tango, like when they try to go some open world and more traditional stuff, that's not their strength. But the minute that they are in control and giving you a completely directed sequence where they're just gonna surprise you and you're on their roller coaster and you don't know what's coming, uh, it, it reminded me just how excited I am to play this game. So would that be your expectation, Adam, that this is gonna be more uh, design controlled levels as opposed to an open world experience? I would say, I bet it's going to be similar to what they did in Evil Within 2. Evil Within 2, I bet was kind of the trial run uh, because it has a slightly open world element. I wouldn't call it an open world game by any stretch. This, we did get a chance to see a map for a little bit. Uh, and there definitely, it's a large game space, but I think you're gonna use that to collect things, power yourself up, and then get into a far more well-directed sequence, which is probably gonna be the hallmark of the game. Yeah, there's, like Adam said earlier, there's so much mystery surrounding this game that like, you could tell that they were keeping things from you, which I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I want more. It's also kind of nice because I, uh, as kind of like a, another aside, I always felt that when the Final Fantasy series kind of moved away and became cross-platform, that Sony kind of lost one of the big pillars that I think really shaped me as a Sony gamer growing up, which was the JRPGs. And that's not to say that Final Fantasy is the only JRPG, but it was kind of the big mainstream one. And so to see uh, Sony kind of continuing with um, Japanese-oriented just even culture or studios or designers or creators, I think is kind of just exciting for me because that's kind of what I associate them with as opposed to Xbox was kind of Halo and then uh, if you wanted to play the JRPGs or have like the more uh, Eastern experience, it was kind of like with the PlayStation. I mean, this is, this is Bethesda's last uh, exclusive on the PlayStation, which still feels surreal. I mean, eventually we expect it's gonna come to the Xbox, but oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Uh, this this is also probably the reason it's been a little bit under the radar. It's not um, it's not getting pushed as hard by the new parent company. Well, we can't wait to get our hands on Ghostwire Tokyo this March. And speaking of horror, after the break, Cup is going to give us her recommendations for horror indies you have to play. So we're gonna go away, but don't be afraid because we'll be right back. Yeah! What's up? I'm Cup of Noodle, and I'm gonna be 
chilling with y'all today. Thank you, thank you. I hope y'all are ready because I have a plethora of horror game titles to share with y'all. I mean, a whole smorgasbord, I think I said it right, of games. It's all of the games. <laughs> And it's literally going to take hours because I've played a lot of games. I hope not. I got places to be. Now, I'm just playing with you, man. I ain't going to hold you. I I'm on the clock, y'all. And if I'm, if I'm being honest, you know, X-Play can't really afford to have me here too long. The way their bank account is set up, yeah, I, I got it. That, that, that works. sounds about right. The budget. Y'all yeah. yeah, yeah. bought cup noodles and fed gex, you know? Y'all yeah. made choices. Um, but um, I do have some great horror titles for you, and we're going to go through them right now. Yeah. Now, I'm sure y'all all, all want to know, you know, as you all know, the horror genre is large, vast, and full of games. These games can range from zombie shooters to campy stories that are just full of jump scares and even cerebral horrors that stay with you long after you play them. And I'm sure by now you're asking, like, yo, Cup, you're talking about horror games in February. That's fair. You know, I'm either super late or just mad early. I, and I know you also want to know, you know, it's one of the two. I'm probably late yeah, knowing yeah, me. Yeah. It's all good. And, you know, you may be asking, where do you get started? And I'm here to help you. We're going to do it right here, right now. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Hold up. Hold it, on a second. It's her first day, and she has a title card. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how the budget is like a reoccurring joke here, but here's the thing, it's not a joke. We're on a budget. <laughs> I have been pitching my JRPG for <laughs> months now. <laughs> it's fine. You're not in trouble. This is not a you. Oh no, I, I, I feel good. your pain, but we got I'm just though. happy to be here. We're you happy know. to have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I gotta figure out, I mean, first things first, I, it would help if I knew everyone's experience levels, you know, with horror games. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, I have completed a lot of horror games. Uh, I have a, uh, a side project with friends called Scary Game Squad, where a bunch of dudes get together, uh, get really wasted, and play scary games together. Uh, we crack jokes the whole time, and we, we scream like children. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we've, we've done everything from all of the Resident Evils uh, to some to a few Fatal Frames to a lot of indie games, you know, a lot of Five Nights games, that kind of stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so that's but my. But you level. were drinking though. So if you were drinking, I was. I, I drink sometimes, but for, I'm I'm mostly the the, the pilot, so the other oh, guys can. So can you were sober funny. through FNAF. Yeah. Oh well, if ever you need to talk, I'm always here Thank for you. you. Yeah, I'm always here. Drinking for during Five Nights at Freddy's is a thing. No, no, I feel like you should, though. Do it's a lot. Are you the designated driver, or are you the designated player? I guess de designated player would be the more appropriate response, okay. but you're definitely kind of driving <laughs> the group, for sure. I'm a big horror movie fan. Fair. I don't play that many horror games because I'm too scared to do it. I, I just can't do it. But I love having friends over and then watching them play and like That's streaming fair. at it. But like art house horror films to the slasher decade, I am a hardcore horror movie junkie. Yeah, um, I'm not the biggest horror game fan. Uh, I I have this thing against paying sixty dollars to raise my heart rate. Um, <laughs> it's you just not for Apex. me. But right, what? Right? It's free. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> it's free. The stress levels are rising. <laughs> but I will say the the few horror games that I do like, I've been told they're considered good. Like I'm a big Outlast fan, and Fair. I'm and I'm a big um what's uh sp the space game uh la, 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 la. alien. No. Dead Space. Dead Space. Dead Got Space. Yeah, my, my, my brain first. I was Perfect. The few, the few I do like, yeah. they're considered good. Well, you only named a few, and the ones you named, I'll give you. They were good. I, I can't hate. I was ready to, but you, you actually, you named some good ones. Outlast is in my top. Um, it's one of those games where I played it, and I wish I never played it so I could play it again. Because oh, it's, yeah. it's one of those. Like It's yeah, like, I absolutely. hate that I know what's going to happen because now I can't do I it I think again. that's the issue with horror games kind of period, too, for me. Like, you can only play it once, and then it's kind of like you know it's coming. I rarely replay games. And when I try to, everyone's like, nah, B, you already played that, boot that down, and that's fair. If I like a game, I want to beat it again. I want to be like you. I want to complete something. They, I get one and done. What about Phasmophobia? I feel like you can play that game repeatedly. I played that. That game was kind of boring. I didn't really like that one. The, I'm a liability friend, so <laughs> I, was all, you know, I, I do all the things that end in death. So I grab the Luigi board. 
I'm yelling and cussing, you know. And oh, you get the, into it. Yes. And so my friends are like, oh, we just going to go wait in the van. And yeah. then I'm like choking out, you know, out of nowhere. <laughs> I think I'm still like level 12 and everyone else is like level 200. I never win. I'm the first one to I'm the opposite. What I do like about Phasmophobia, because I played that, is like, I just like the troll. So like, I like to just run around and shout, is the ghost here? Come fight me. I just like to mess the team up. That's where I get my fun, ruining everybody. You're like, Robin, how old are you? Robin, your wife never <laughs> loved you. Robin. <laughs> exactly. I love it. <laughs> so when it goes south, you going back outside? Yeah, I don't care. It's a game. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is fair. Well, let's see. So we talked about those. I feel like we got to talk about shooters, action horrors, which I think most people are familiar with, which is going to be, for me, Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. Hands down, one of the best of all time. Yes. One yeah. of my favorite franchises just ever, like two, three, one, hands down. I mean, you can play zero and six, but you also don't have to play zero and six. You see, you don't have to, you've missed nothing. But yeah. as a franchise, <laughs> RE's really big. And I'm gonna say best, but it's my best. I hate when I say best and then people, don't at me. I don't mean, it's, I mean my best. Yeah, and I, it's d- what's for you. Yes, yeah. because it's no, not. I'm with, I'm with there with you. The, the camera in Resident Evil 1 was scary, man. It, Tank it, controls. It, yeah, it just, it, it, it did something for me. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's what's your, your absolute top of the Resident Evil games? Ooh. Two, three, one. When you say two, three, one, do you mean the original two, original oh, okay, three, I'm taking original the original. one, or, re- or remakes? Remake three was, we don't talk about that. It's a shame. I, it, it it's, was, a, it's, it's a shame. It took me beating the game to say, yeah, we're missing a lot of game. Yeah. Like, we were doing things, I'm like, wait, but we didn't go over, and then we missed this part, yeah. and then it was over, and I was like, oh, someone owes me $20. I'm going to be yeah. we were missing <laughs> game. Okay. Yeah. But so I'm taking the originals always. Because that's when I was the most confused. It took me years to beat RE2. I didn't yeah. know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing. It was before Google. I was just confused, <laughs> looking for the clover key. You know, I didn't know what yeah. I was doing. I will say, though, Resident Evil 2 Remake is... It was really good. It's so good. I only I played the third one. Like, my chat <sighs> trolled me into playing the third one. So it kind of left a bad taste on off, and I never touched 2. What was the difference between 2 and 3? The remakes. Uh, I mean, a lot, <laughs> a, a, a lot. It, it's, that Where could, do I start? That could be a whole segment in its own in its own way. But I, the big difference is that uh, Resident Evil Two, in my opinion, is a lot more faithful to mm. what the PlayStation era was, and it also did a great job of modernizing a lot of the sensibilities of what makes Resident Evil in the current day so good. So it really feels like, you know, I would I I'd almost compare it to like Final Fantasy VII remake in that way of of reimagining what everyone loves from Resident Evil 2 specifically. Because that, hands down, I, in my opinion, is the, Absolutely. the Resident Evil game that everyone remembers. Yeah, I feel like 3 was a little just... It didn't really scare me. It didn't. I feel like what makes a great horror game is the atmosphere. That's what, like... I feel like a lot of games are a little, they lean a little bit too much into action nowadays. Okay. And like for me, like that's why Dead Space was so great when you were walking through those hallways in that you never, I, I feel like you can predict a lot of times when something is going to jump at you. And that's why I can't get into a lot of horror games. So like when it sets the atmosphere and it's eerie and it's not something always coming at you and it becomes more almost like a psychological game. Yes. Like you start spooking yourself out. That's a good horror that game. That fear of unease where it's yeah. like, I don't know what's coming, but it's coming and it's going to punch me in the back of the head. And that's fair. <laughs> those are some of my favorite games. And it's like, for those who have never heard of me, it's like, this girl has issues. And that's fair. I totally, <laughs> it's like not her enjoying the feeling of fear. I obviously have issues, but it's a good time. Those make for some of my favorite games, like Outlast. And the next one that I was actually going to talk about, which is, I guess, best campy horror, which I'm giving to Until Dawn. Yeah. Ooh, I yeah. love Until Dawn. The, Until Dawn. I, you know, I, I know, the, say what you will about the, the, the Dark Chronicle anthology and how they've kind of, grown and adapted and told some of their stories. Until Dawn, in my opinion, is it's still is still one of the greatest. Um, you know, it, it, you're right. It is that can't be horror. It is very tropey, but it does keep you guessing on your toes. And the butterfly effect of you making your decisions definitely instills that fear of, oh, I don't want to mess this up at any given moment. I also think the writing is actually really funny in Until Dawn, and I think that's what uh, that, you don't usually think about comedy in tandem with horror, but it has always been, like, the horror genre for movies is the, the stoner genre, and, like, you have to have good comedy with, like, those good scares to make, like, a cult classic, and I think Until Dawn has, like, both in spades. I love that game. Yeah, they did a really good job of making you care about these characters, whether you loved them or hated them. I like Emily. Everyone hates Emily. She was so mean. I love her. Um, <laughs> 
But you cared, even if it didn't matter how you felt, you just kind of wanted to see what happened next. The replayability is absolutely there. Don't move cheats, because I can assure you, I never move. Oh, but I man. guess I, I have the nerves of a geriatric, so I guess I'm moving. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you haven't seen it, or maybe, you know, I know a lot of people don't like playing. They just like watching people play. Until Dawn is one of those games, no matter who plays it, it's a good time. But if you can find someone who's never played it, just sit back and get ready to laugh. The, the key to those games is play the characters. Mm. Don't try and do what you want to do. <laughs> do what they would do in this scenario. So if you're like, okay, I'm a 17-year-old boy, like jock, who's hot for the chick, and the murderer's coming after you, like... What do you do in that scenario? Do you run for the hills? You push her on the ground and you run. <laughs> right, right. That, that, is the, that is the right call for that character. Right. But like, if it's like the, the leading male ingenue with, with the girl, like you stick them together. Like you have to stick to that formula most of the time. And if you do, you, you usually win. The other great thing about Until Dawn is that uh, they're super easy to play for non-gamers. Oh yeah. Like, my mm. wife doesn't play games and she can play that game. Watching her try to play something like Bioshock is a nightmare. <laughs> 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 no, that is very fair. And okay, because I, I, I brought games. I told y'all I'm keep ready. Keep going. We're talking indie games. I am playing horror games. I've played a lot of indie games. Some are really good. There's no in between. They're either really good or, or it's really like you don't get to pick games for the rest of the week. And I'm like, like that's Sonic the, games. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Like Sonic games. <laughs> absolutely. Hold on. Hold on a second. Camera. Camera. One camera. Where are you? Where are you? Zoom in a little bit. Give me a little push. Don't in. talk about Sonic. I love Sonic games. <laughs> I'm making that now. Wait. Adam Sessler, I love Sonic games. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in the ring. Let's go. Shout it. <laughs> All right. Make this statement now. Back to this. Sonic Adventure I don't even know so what this is. <laughs> what is this at this point? Um, no. We ask ourselves that every time, so yeah. you're fine. I'm it's just a out. fight. <laughs> I, at least I'm understanding the vibe. At the yeah. very least, I, I'm here for the vibe. If I'm not alone in this feeling. Um, <laughs> No, I, I guess, what game was it? I don't remember what we're talking about. Sonic. 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 There Sonic we go, Heart. Sonic Horror. I almost said Sonic Adventures. Best indie games. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm like, I almost said Sonic Adventures. Some would Sonic say it's a horror Sonic Adventures. 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 See, Sonic just messes you up in the brain, man. It's so crazy. I, I've never heard Shadow of Shadow has guns. That's, not in Sonic Adventure. That's, but that's, he's, <laughs> like, tell me that's not messed up. It, and he works for the president. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's true. Uh, Song of Horror. Yes. I have never played this game. I've never heard of it. How does it me, what does it look like? Give me, give me the 411. The, this is one of my favorite games I played about two years ago. If you miss like old school RE, Silent Hill, Tank Controls. I'm sold. This is the game. It's like five episodes, but it's really cool because it has a permadeath system. So the way it works is you get like a handful of characters, but if they all die, that's it. You get game over, and then you gotta run it back. I like the atmosphere, wow. like in the footage that they're showing. I've never shown this, but it, I've never seen it, it. I mean, but like I like the way the tone in the game, the gameplay. Right is now. it just a house? Yes. Yeah, so you have to figure out. It's pretty much about a music box, and the story is cool. Don't when did get this me come wrong. Out? This like 2019, 2020. It's like, like visually, it's appealing too. It just made. It's on console it. now. Listen, it's everywhere. Legend Arceus. You need to pay attention to this because this game looks great right now and Arceus looks terrible. Oh well, your God. wife may like it, Frost, because I know you were saying you know, she, she doesn't really play the shooters. This is kind of like Until Dawn in the sense that there are QTEs. So you have things that are trying to come through the door. You got to kind of listen before you come and you open a door because you will get snatched what up. What was the rain game? This is what it looks like to me. The one with the, the heavy, heavy rain? rain. Heavy rain, yeah, with the serial killer. You do have QTEs, they'll snatch you up under the table. And what's cool is, even when you die, that doesn't mean you're gone. So it's like, you have to play someone else, but all, for all you know, you're gonna bend oh, the corner. Oh, die, you change, you change characters Yeah, altogether. you only get a handful, but that doesn't mean they That's leave. That's a cool way to tell a story. Yeah. yeah. And like so that. you kind of see it through their eyes, depending mm. on who's standing. That's really cool. Is it better to complete the game, in your opinion, as like a single character because of their perspective or their story through the game? Being that everyone sees things differently, I, I feel like it's worth playing multiple times. That dude was cool. Um, the cool thing about it is they all perceive each other differently. So you may lose one character and then you end up in a hallway and you see the character that just previously died. Someone may, you can either run up on him and try to talk to him, but 
if they're not there anymore, they'll kill you and you don't oh. know it. But they all have different cutscenes for how they interact with each other once they get snatched up. So just trying to see all the different ways you can die in this game and then like solving puzzles. Cause like I said, it's like RE or Silent Hill. You have like the QTEs coming in. The story's really good. I will forever praise Song of Horror. It's finally on console. If you haven't done it, definitely check it out. Marketing is important. Cause I never heard of this game. See? Yeah, I just sold it. She just sold yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. You're which camera? Any You're you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to point at all of them. Right? <laughs> no, definitely. If y'all check it out, let me know. Unless you didn't like it. and then, I promise you, you Then will. it's not my fault. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm You're not asking me I'm for $30. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I feel like I, I talked everyone's ears off. I, I don't want to steal any more time. I appreciate y'all. We appreciate um, you. No, Thank steal you all the time. Here. Yeah. Sure. Thank you for rocking with me, you know, going on this little horror journey with us all. Thank y'all. Um, I can't wait for everyone to boot something up, get all good and scared. If you're playing, let me know. I'd love to know. Um, in the meantime, we've got something much scarier coming up. Um, Adam's Final Kingdom Hearts 3 check-in. Oh, uh -oh. God. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Creepy. Um, yeah. See you all after the break. Woo! Woo! Welcome back to X-Play, everyone. It's Tuesday, you know what that means. We check in with Adam to see where he is in Kingdom Hearts 3. Roll that title card. All right, Adam. So, how far are you in Kingdom Hearts? I'm done. Woo! What? <laughs> you're, you're done? Mm-hmm, yep, I beat the game, I saw the ending, it's like passing a stone, I am done. I already know the answer to this question, but did it answer all of your questions by the end? No, no, I, 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 it's only more questions. Yeah, uh, Adam, this is Frost with G4, uh, does it <clears throat> redeem itself for you? Does it redeem, no, 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 um, no, no, I, it's, I feel sullied. To be honest, I just, I still don't know how to clean the pleasantness of it or the, that smiley, happy thing. I don't know how to get rid of that. Hey, Adam, a uh, shooter guy here. Gonna shoot my shot here. Uh, <laughs> did you end up liking any of the Disney elements? I, 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 I like the Toy Story because there were toys and I like those characters and, 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 and that's it. Yeah, uh, follow up, uh, Frost again, G4. Um, that's Pixar. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so yeah, I didn't like any of the Disney elements. Though I did hear that song that the kids love, the uh, the the ice song. When let you it go. Walk away. Show me more. Let it go. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, let yeah, it go. From let it from go. Frozen. Yeah. I heard. Yeah, it's the first time I ever heard that song. It's not a bad song. It's not a Kingdom good song, song. But it's of not a bad song. All the songs to reference in Kingdom Hearts, that's the one you pick. Well, he just said that he's never seen Frozen and. In the frozen world in Kingdom Hearts 3, well, essentially, is the movie. Also, also that that song, the the, the Make It Go song, um, that's go. the only time I felt that there were full sentences being expressed inside of the game. Because it's a, just a song for queer coding. It's just a, it's a really gay song. That's probably the other reason <laughs> I liked it, too. <laughs> real, real, real quick, Adam, uh, this is uh, Gerard from X-Play. Uh, will you play any more action RPGs after this? Um, do they have Disney characters? Uh, I mean, oh, yep. not necessarily. As far as I know, <laughs> there's only one set of RPG, action RPGs out there that star Disney characters. So I guess the question is, yeah. are there, if, if, if given the opportunity, would you play another action RPG that doesn't necessarily have Disney characters? I am willing to entertain, um, what's the Final Fantasy game where the boys are in the car having the Final time of Fantasy their life? Final Fantasy 15, That's, okay. I can see how you Does that, and I know they did the remake Final of Fantasy. Final Fantasy 7. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm willing to entertain that. Um, but yeah, um, if I ever see Clown Shoe Boy again, like... I'm gonna shoot a fool. Okay? What about like a like, like a, I can't like a Star Ocean? Tales of Arise. Tales, good series. I have, I guess so. Uh, I mean, as long as like the hemlines on the children are 
like acceptable and not creepy. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, and there's no mice. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Frosk again with G4. Um, I've got bad news, but are you excited for Kingdom Hearts 4? What? I mean, it's not. They're, they're actually going to do another. It's not confirmed. There is speculation about it. If you get the secret what's, endings, what's, what's left? I mean, you kill Howie Mandel with, you know, nice Sean Connery guy, and like, it, and the, like the apocalypse heart is gone. Yeah. Uh, and like suddenly like 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 you know clown shoe boy and hemline girl are sitting on a tree branch like it's like the blue lagoon or something like that. I can Except I, without the naughty. I can help you here, Adam. See, um Kingdom Hearts is under the creative direction of Tetsuya Nomura. And he just loves, instead of building on his previous lore that he's already built, just completely creating new lore and smashing it together with the with the the old one. You know what I mean? Like so, it can go on forever. He's just a he's a money pit, just waiting to happen. So like Christianity. I don't know how we got there, but uh, for the you know what it, I'll, I'll lore, say yes. it works. lore building on lore for money. I'm just throwing it out there. Adam, per personally speaking, I think, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to give you homework, but I honestly think that you would really like. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think the the yes. interpretation yes. of it, uh, what they're doing with it now, it's very streamlined. Al almost all of it makes sense. And when I say almost all of it, it's because the ending is very highly contested as very weird. But everything else, it, even if you didn't play the first, the first version of the game and you want something a little more uh, energized with more depth and, and character growth, Remake, FF7 Remake is very solid. And it combines a lot of the elements that our modern RPGs are kind of capitalizing on while combining the grassroots of where it came from. So it feels very fresh. I'm, I'm interested. I am legit interested in Final Fantasy 15. I think it would be fun because I think the kids enjoyed me suffering through Kingdom Hearts. But like we, we do a trade off because I love the idea of hearing from TBH when he's playing uh, Knights of the Old Republic for the first time. Mm. And if I could get you or Frost to play Alan Wake and see what like your take on that is. I'm like I'm offering you good games. But uh yeah, I'll keep playing some of these JRPGs uh to see if maybe I'm going to um I I think there still might be a sweet spot out there. He just uh, it's just it just, it just don't have goofy in it. Final Fantasy VII Remake. And don't get me wrong, Alan Wake's a good game. I just recently bought the remastered version. It's one of the few games that I play on my PS5, so it's not a total, total paperweight. But don't you come over here being like, I offered you good games, when this motherfucker right now is just sliding you the FF7 Remake. He just gave that one to you. Yeah, as someone who just- <laughs> That's the one with Cloud, right? It is the one with Cloud, but I promise he you- He is the worst character! Cloud. Cloud, the star of Air Guys. God, I remember reviewing that on the PlayStation One. It was the Final Fantasy. It's fighting about game. eco terrorism and the the, the evils of capitalism, and it's everything that you love. Yeah, I've, I've actually I didn't play the original Final Fantasy VII. The remake was my first time, and like I had no issues actually being able to follow the story. So he's one hundred percent correct. I think it's actually a great starting all right, place. All right, oh, no, 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 I I I I I I I, I, I actually want to play it. I, I just, yes, I just yes, tell yes. Tell uh, anyone. Now that is an update that we me. need to go through. So, uh, Adam, real quick, uh, Gerard G4 here. Now that you're done, when is the review coming out? What's what's today? Tuesday. Okay. Carry the one, divide by three, solve for x, quadratic equation, b squared, the square root of da, 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 x, a, b. Oh, it's out tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, the review is out tomorrow. tomorrow? Yeah. Holy oh, shit. Lord. Oh, boy. Oh. Yes, yes, Jess Jefferson, the review is out tomorrow. Do you just have that cosplay at the ready? <laughs> yeah, you don't? Jefferson, why are you going through Avali's closet? No. Avali's closet? No, I don't. This is, this is fresh from my room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, weird. What did you think? It was great, right? It sure was a video game. The it best was video, video game. game. Interactive. Remember when, remember when Aqua got norted? <laughs> but then she wasn't norted. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm recalling it right now. That was so cool. What was your favorite part? When it was over. Yeah, that ending. That ending was great. I can't, oh, I can't wait. I just know this is going to be a five- out of five. Hey, Jefferson, uh, maybe recalibrate your expectations just a, a scotch, just a little bit. Holy crap. Is this going to be 
X plays first? Six out of five? No, 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 no. I didn't say anything like that. No, no, no. <laughs> six out of five. Six out of five. Come on, Gerard. Donald. Goofy. Six out of five. 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 There you go, folks. My review of Kingdom Hearts 3 is out tomorrow. Is it a six out of five? No. You'll just have to wait and see what it actually is. And with that, let's go to break, and there's more X-Play on the other side. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to X-Play. My name is Gerard the Completionist, and I am lucky enough today to be sitting here with the one and only Danny Trejo, actor in films like From Dusk Till Dawn, uh, Heat, Desperado, Machete, it's my personal favorite, uh, but our producer's personal favorite has to be Spy Kids. <laughs> uh, but you're not yes. also an actor, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a father, Danny Trejo, thank you for being here so much. Thank it you, a lot. thank you. How's your day going so far? Great, great, and we started a record label that's doing really well. Oh, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> you, already, you, you already took one of my questions for later on, but we'll, we'll get into that more, more in just a little bit. So obviously early on I mentioned some movies that you've been a part of, but you've also been in a bunch of video games including Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Far Cry 6, Def Jam, and now Ollie Ollie World. Yes. Uh, what's kind of your connection to skateboarding? Well, you, you know, when uh, I had uh, children, I, I moved to Venice, and we noticed that at the time uh, Venice was just becoming like the skateboard kind of capital of the world. And uh, I remember Jay Adams and different different people that were skating. And uh, I noticed that kids that were into skateboarding were staying like out of trouble because, because they had something to do. So it's like, you know, I started like, wow, that's I really liked the fact that 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 was something that they, kids gravitated to. I never, I, I tried it once and it was disastrous. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Me too, for what it's worth. <laughs> okay. But watching, watching young people uh, uh, defy gravity was like unbelievable. So skateboarding for me is rehab. It's just, it's, uh, it's a, a good alternative to kids getting in trouble. I love that, especially because Tony Hawk is such an advocate about building so many of those parks across the United States. Uh, there's one next to my home, and it's exactly like you said. They're, every morning I wake up, there's kids there playing. They're not in trouble, they're just enjoying it, and they're practicing, they're learning a craft, and it's so exciting to see them excel at it, too. And that's what you see. You see kids in the summer go there at eight o'clock in the morning and start skating, and they're there all day. Absolutely. So you've done a lot of video games. Uh, do you have any favorite roles that that kind of resonate with you? And and what is, what is it about video games that appeals to you when you pick, you know, picking a character from any of the games that are offered well, you to know you? What? I at first I, I got I go all the way back to uh, Grand Theft Auto. I think the first one. You know, yeah. That was like years, years, uh, years ago. And I just had a lot of fun doing it. They give me, I mean, well, you have a week to study this. Okay, the line is, kill him. <laughs> and I, I imagine you've done so many games like that. So yeah, it's probably, you know. oh, kill him. I've done that line <laughs> several times. This was it's kind of a lot of fun. You go on missions and you do some different kinds of things. So it's kind of a, a change and a lot of fun. Yeah, the aesthetic is very, it's very much cartoon cell shaded. So it's very, very lively, yeah. very fun, very yeah. vibrant. Not, not so do. much... Uh, so much dark and gritty from your previous I games. I did one, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. I it, boy, I did it and it went viral. Danny Trey was on Animal Crossing, but they made me this cute little. <laughs> <laughs> Just rocking out and dancing. Yeah, yeah. I'm building this island, so it was kind of cool. <laughs> so kind of in the realm of video games, uh, you've done so many films. If there was one of the movie that you've worked on what do you think would be great to also double as a video game? I think Machete would be awesome. Oh my gosh. But as a video game, God, that would be crazy. <laughs> the machete in space might be, we gotta do that one too. You I gotta would, make that movie. I would lose my mind. Uh, I, machete <laughs> is one of my favorite films that you've done. It's one, it's, it's just, you look like you're having fun every step of the way in the film, and it translates so much from start to finish. And, and I'm the only actor to kill uh, Steven Seagal. <laughs> 
What what a on screen. You can't get any you, look there are there's the Oscars, there's the yeah. Academy Awards, nah. there's that moniker is for yeah. you and you alone. At Robert it's funny, Robert Rodriguez is just a genius. You know, I think he'd be genius doing video games. You yeah. Know? And uh, I just finished, the, uh, we did the uh, Star Wars series, Boba, Boba Fett. Boba Fett, yeah. yeah. And uh, when you see how far technology has gone, God, when I walked in this office and I said, man, we've gone a long way from... <laughs> <laughs> from Pong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Obviously, when you're not acting, uh, you're very passionate about your restaurants. Tell us about Treyos Tacos. How's it going? How do you feel about it? I, I love it. I had to make Trejo's Tacos feel like you were coming into your living room. Yeah. And the staff is all, I get I get compliments on the staff. Everybody's friendly. Everybody there is just like really happy to work there. I got into the restaurant business kind of by accident. It's like everything, everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. And I was helping this director who had asked my agent if I could do this low-budget movie called Badass. That would be another one, good one for a video game. We did it. It turned into a trilogy. I made four times the money. And and uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> Listen to your agent. And, and, uh, and then, and then, but I met this producer named Ash Shaw. He saw that I eat food, good, good food. So he said, Danny, why don't you open a restaurant? Jokingly, I said, Trejo's Tacos. Yeah, just I like the TT, you know. Yeah. The, and so uh, we did Badass, Badasses, Badass on the Bayou with Danny Glover. And and, uh, and he brought me a business plan, you know, and I did about 13 pages. I opened it and didn't have any killing in the first page. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Come on. So <laughs> It's the way I read a script. <laughs> Where's the murder? <laughs> yeah. So I gave it to I gave it to my agent and Gloria. She says it's a no brainer. So we got five restaurants in uh, in Los Angeles. We got a ghost kitchen in Miami, one in uh, Chicago, and one in up north, Redlands, California. And we've been going five years now. And you know most restaurants die the first year. Yeah. And. Everybody said, what's your secret? I said, good food. <laughs> People don't come back. Yeah. I don't care who you are. You yeah. know what I mean? People don't come back for bad food. So so it's good good food, friendly atmosphere. So Absolutely. It's doing really well. Congratulations. Thank That's got to feel great. We, felt we, we stayed working during the pandemic and stuff. I, I think the good Lord let us, because we never stopped feeding like like the hospitals and the homeless and and. Delivery. I love. I used to, used to love to like show up at a delivery if it was close. And so and here, <laughs> <laughs> you just love to to blow people's minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on the topic of food. I have to ask. I'm an LA native. You're an LA native. Uh, imagine that we have someone here who's never been to Los Angeles. Uh, what are some of your favorite places around the city to take them to if you had oh, to? Oh, God. First trail struggles <laughs> to eat. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? Yeah, I then met him through so... That through the, I don't know, they've got a wax figure of me like this. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of amazing. My family would come to Texas. They would always take him to, would always take him to the wax museum. Yeah. I never thought I'd be there, you know. <laughs> and, and then uh, uh, take him to Grums, check the handprints. Yeah. You know, but that's just the, the, the free stuff. Take him down to Venice Beach. So um, along those lines, All Dolly World is about weird and wacky places. Uh, what taco or maybe donut creation of yours would you consider to be the perfect fit to match Ali Ali World? We have a pineapple fritter that's just, if you eat two, you need rehab. I mean, so, <laughs> you know, it's like you got one, one, and that's you're like done for the day. But our, our donut shop, it would be like a great place to for Ali Ali to stop. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're at Trail Donuts. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, so you're able to work in a lot of different spaces from movies to games to food uh, to, you know, your early co-ownership of a lawn care business. Um, I mean, you're in the book of Boba Fett. 
you know? Yeah, and, and, and you, you were bringing it up earlier. Are there any creative avenues that you haven't explored yet that you are about to get into or that you're excited at the prospects of, of doing it? No, I, 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 like I said, I had a record label and I was singing this song just kind of joking, you know, it's called I'm an Outlaw by War. Baby Bash, who I'm kind of partners with, said, hey, let's do that. So I did it. So I think my first singing uh, debut is going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so... I, I still think it's funny. I mean, because you know, everybody sounds good in the shower. Yeah. You, know, man? <laughs> but, you think but... you sound great in the shower, but you come out, maybe not yeah. so much. I have a Three singers that are just awesome, Jasmine, Twixie, and Tara New, and Baby Bash, and Trish Toledo, and we just put an album together, so it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And, that is, and it's like, I told you, everything I've done, everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. I helped this lady that was living in a battered woman's shelter, and her daughter wanted to be a singer, so we just... Heard her sing, wow. And so we started a record label and it just blew up. And Twixie, she's doing great. She's, you know, singing. And I can't stop her, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's one of them people that'll sing on the, on the curb and start singing. You know? <laughs> but so that's great, you know. And, uh, and Baby Bash says she's got a, she's got a boom box in her throat, you know. And, uh, Jasmine, she looks like Selena, sounds just like her. And Tara is like unbelievable. So I got one last question for you. And I feel like you've already kind of answered it based on the themes you've already told me. But what's one piece of advice that you got during your career that you still think about to this day? A guy named Eddie Bunker, who I was uh, actually in San Quentin with. He came out, he did a movie called Straight Time with Dustin Hoffman. And, and I remember when we got together on runaway train and I started becoming like a little famous. He said, Danny, you got to remember this. And I said, what? He says, everybody can think you're a movie star, but you can't. Mm. I said, what do you mean? He said, watch. And so we went over to where one of the movie stars were and we were watching everybody like, ooh, yeah. And it was kind of sickening. And then he walked away. And when he walked away, I heard, God, I like to kick his ass. And I thought, wow, you know, I understood what he meant, you know, because he was, I won't let people call me a movie star. No, no, I'm, a, I'm an actor. I'm a working actor. Because movie stars get this thing in their head that they're like entitled and they can be late and they can, uh, without calling. And they, the world you know, kind of revolves around them. Yeah, yeah, you know, and there's no I in team. But if you say that to somebody and they say, yeah, but there's a me. Mm. They're a movie star. Get away from them. Yeah. Or slap them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an honor uh, speaking with you. And, you know, even if you do beat me in the coolest guy in L.A. contest for the last 10 years and counting. But uh, just like Joey Chestnut and Kobayashi, uh, we are America's greatest rivalry. Except uh, we don't barf up 50 hot dogs after every competition. Anyways, please check out Ali Ali World on February 8th. And Danny Trejo every day in movies, films, TVs, games, all over the place. Thank you so much. See you guys soon.
everyone, that's going to do it for today here on X-Play. We want to give a very special thank you to Danny Trejo once again for joining Woo! us. Woo! Woo! It was, it was honestly one of the coolest moments of my life to talk to him. He's such a, a great guy. I also uh, want to... Wait, hold on a second. Oh, God. My producer tells me you have one more thing. What? It's... Oh, it's... it's hey, Kenny. How's it going? Hey, everybody. Great show. Just want to tell you, great show. Th thank you, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, I really like the Kingdom Hearts a bit. I'm a big fan. Anthropomorphic animals. Who knew? Is that all? Yeah, oh no, I just want to drop in real quick and say, if you see a honey badger wearing a Nintendo Power Glove, it is not a pet. Don't pet it, it's not domesticated. <laughs> oh God, my arm! <laughs> I never mind, I found it. Thanks guys. Hey, Candace, get back in your cage! <laughs> Kenny's a weird guy, you guys. I don't think he's coming back on X-Play ever again. But that aside, we also want to thank our tremendous guest host this week, Cup of Noodle. Woo! Thank you for joining us. I'm still. Y'all have me here with Kenny on the loose? Be, I mean, he'll be okay. Okay, long as he'll be okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see what gets we'll find a container. She gets we, out of her cage. We hope this was a somewhat enjoyable experience for you and that you join us again. Absolutely. Soon. You know, I. No! I I guess I, you know, I had a good time. Th thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Cup. And thank you, all of us, for joining us. If you'd like to talk about the show and give us some feedback, please check out our Discord and subreddit. And be sure to check out our VODs on YouTube. Thank you so much. Keep playing games. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>